It is now my great pleasure to introduce Ms. Erin Morrissey, who has completed her Master of Science degree in Occupational Therapy, <laughs> and who is representing your graduate class this evening. Erin has a wonderful story to share with us, and I invite her to come forward now and do just that. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I give you Erin Morrissey. Friends, family, faculty, administration, staff, and most importantly, my fellow Lemoyne graduates and peers, tonight I want to tell you a story. It's about a young man, probably not older than many of us, who didn't quite know exactly where he belonged or what he wanted to do with his life. Sounds familiar, right? Let me back up. When I first started writing this speech, I was sitting outside on my deck with my dogs on a beautiful sunny day in April. I know, hard to believe because this is Syracuse and we had about three nice days in all of April. But as I was sitting around thinking, procrastinating, and really not getting much done at all, I asked myself how I could relate my speech to the various graduate programs offered here at Lemoyne. And I didn't get very far. The truth is, I really don't know many students outside of my own class. Graduate programs are so specified and rigorous and typically short in duration, it makes it difficult to get to know other students. To try to find out more about some of the other graduate programs here at Lemoyne, I turned to the almighty internet. Thanks to Google, I came to find that the descriptions of all of our programs had common themes using words like cura personalis and magis. A lot of you might be telling yourselves, okay, I don't know what those words mean, and apparently they describe my program of study, but I'm graduating today, so it's okay. But I think it's truly important to understand the depth and meaning behind these words, because they are what make us all a true dolphin. These are Latin words meaning care for the whole person and always striving for more. They are two of the six Jesuit values that have been incorporated into each of our programs, whether we all know it or not. Rewind to about a minute or so ago when I said I was going to tell you a story about a young man who didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. That man's name is Inigo Lopez. If you're really confused, he eventually changed his name to St. Ignatius of Loyola, AKA the founder of the Jesuits. So why is St. Ignatius so important to Lemoyne? Why do we hear his name so often? St. Ignatius was the founder and leader of the Society of Jesus, which are the Jesuits who founded Lemoyne in the year 1946. Lemoyne was built on the Jesuit values of cura personalis and magis, ultimately growing from a storefront in downtown Syracuse to a remarkable 36 building campus today. Without St. Ignatius, none of us would be sitting here. I'm not going to tell you his whole story, but to give you a snapshot of what his extraordinary life was like, I'll mention some highlights that stuck out to me. But I want you to think about why these things stuck out to me and why they might be important to all of us graduating today. St. Ignatius had one leg that was significantly shorter than the other due to several surgeries after he sustained an injury in battle. He began attending grammar school at the age of 33 and ultimately obtained a master's degree at the age of 43. Eventually, the Society of Jesus was formed with St. Ignatius as the leader. With his followers, St. Ignatius created schools and colleges all around Europe. And finally, a museum was created and dedicated to St. Ignatius next to the house that he was born in, in Spain. So why did I choose to mention these things? If you listen closely, every one of the things that I just mentioned incorporates some aspect of the careers that we're all delving into. Whether it was St. Ignatius himself or someone he interacted with, all of our programs here at Lemoyne can be related to him. Perhaps if this was today's world, a nurse, physician's assistant, or occupational therapist would help him during his recovery after he was injured in battle. He certainly came across many educators and teachers who had lasting impacts on him during the many years he spent as a scholar. Some may even say he was a businessman who created the Society of Jesus and with his followers spread his ideas around the world. And to ensure his legacy lived on, a museum was created by arts administration professionals that symbolizes and tells the story of St. Ignatius. What I'm trying to say is, 
No matter if none of us ever interacted with students from another program here at Lemoyne, the possibility of crossing paths with those in careers other than our own is undeniable. St. Ignatius would be approximately 527 years old today and look at all the professionals that he potentially, potentially interacted with. His journey through life took unexpected turns and he created a path for himself that led to him becoming one of the most influential religious figures in history. Lemoyne too has given us the education and values that we need to succeed. They have instilled in us a Jesuit education that is so much more than just going to work, doing our job, and going home. I was once told by a professor here at Lemoyne that colleges strive to create great students, but Jesuits strive to create great people. As with St. Ignatius, we too have the opportunity to have a lasting effect on our future clients, students, employees, or whomever it may be in our workplace, if we work together and use the ideals that were instilled in our programs to do so. It has been an absolute honor to speak to you all on behalf of Lemoyne College. I know we will accomplish great things together, and our own journeys through life are just beginning. Here's to the graduating class of 2018, and as St. Ignatius would say, Go forth and set the world on fire. <laughs>